Hey guys, this is Peter with the Command Valley bringing you another Commander Deck Tech. Thank you to GameGrid for sponsoring this video. If you want to check out their new and improved store and support the channel while doing it, check out the link in the description below. We have a copy and pasteable deck list in the description that you can paste right into their deck builder and buy your singles there. If you want to support the channel directly, head on over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash commandvalley to sign up today. Today I'm going to be brewing a deck for Another new commander from Commander Legends, Thalise Reverent Medium. Thalise is a legendary creature human cleric. She costs three, a white and a black. She's a three, four, and she says at the beginning of each end step, create X one, one white spirit creature tokens with flying, where X is the number of tokens you've created this turn. I'm a big fan of Orzov Aristocrats, and I have previously built Tesa Karlov, and it was one of the first deck techs that we had on our channel. Felice is a new and interesting strategy, specifically wanting you to create a lot of tokens and get more tokens as a payoff. Essentially, it's an anointed procession on a commander. In a sense, it doubles the number of tokens you're producing. We're going to try to use this to our advantage, create an insane amount of tokens, and find a way to use them to finish off our opponents. And since we're in Orzov, that way will most likely be a sacrifice strategy. Every successful Aristocrats deck aims to have three things on the battlefield at any one time. At least this is the way I think about it when I'm building. Three things. Those things are a sacrifice outlet, a token generator, and a payoff for sacrificing your creatures. Sacrifice outlets are very valuable, for with them, you get to control which creatures on your board die and when. Often this can save you from interaction spells that would put them in an undesirable location, such as in your exile or in your hand. Starting with the cheapest to cast, we have Viserysir and Carrion Feeder. Both cost one black mana to cast and have some effects that aren't super useful for the deck when you activate their sacrifice ability. Okay, I take that back. Viserysir's scry ability is a must have for this deck and if you have a lot of tokens that you're sacking, you can go really deep into this library. Carrion Feeder pumps himself up, but we don't really need to attack and he can't block, so mainly he's just there because he's a free sack outlet. Eile Eternal Pilgrim is not a free sack outlet, but rather we have to pay for either of her abilities when we activate her. Her first ability gains us life, and then if we have enough life, we can use her second ability to exile non-line permanents for a relatively cheap cost. Even if sacking isn't free, the life gain is hard to beat, and the interaction is even harder to beat, and it's an essential piece in the deck. Altar of Dementia is another one where the effect is not doing very much on the overall deck strategy, but it is a free sack outlet, so we'll take it. I have seen this card put in decks where Mill isn't the main win con and have it win the game all on its own anyways, so it's a worthy include if only for that. Three of the best sack outlets that we can have are Yeheni Undying Partisan, Woe Strider, and Ashnod's Altar. Yeheni pumps up whenever opponent's creatures die, which pairs really well with some enchantments that we'll mention later on, and can sack a creature to gain Indestructible. This makes Yeheni very hard to interact with. Woe Strider is likewise hard to kill, has a similar effect to Viserys here, letting us scry whenever we sack creatures, and makes a creature on its own. Its escape cost means that we can bring it back from the graveyard anytime if we have enough other cards to exile from our graveyard, and having a recurrable sack outlet can be very important sometimes, especially if your p opponents are playing lots of interaction. Ashnaut's Altar gives us two colorless mana when we sacrifice a creature with it, which enables some very good combos that we'll talk about later on. Our remaining two sack outlets are Crav the Unredeemed and Yogmoth Thran Physician, neither of which are technically free activations, but their effects make it worth it. Crav draws us cards equal to the number of creatures we sacrificed, and gains us that much life, and makes himself that much stronger, all for only one black. I've elected not to include its partner Regna in the deck, simply because she's a little bit slower and the deck, le and the deck isn't primarily focused around life gain, but if you do want to have another token generator, Regna is a good choice. Yogmoth requires you to pay a life whenever you activate his ability, but his ability lets you draw a card, which is unique to sack outlets and a very valuable asset to have on the board. Both Yogmoth and Krav are essential card draw engines to have. Now the second component to a successful Aristocrats deck is token generators. These are creatures and other effects that make additional tokens. Since Thalise has a special interest in creating tokens, we put more emphasis on this category than we do in a typical Aristocrats deck. 
it's absolutely essential to have a steady stream of tokens being made for this deck to function. First, we have our one-off spells that make tokens, and all of the ones that we've chosen for this deck are flexible X spells that we can use at any point in the game. Those cards are Secure the Waste, Martial Coup, and Decree of Justice. These can get you just a couple of tokens if you need them right then, or get you a lot in the late game. Martial Coup is also a board wipe if you pump it enough, which can be really handy if you don't have other things on the board, but I would advise using it when you are struggling to get your commander on the field rather than when your commander is already there. The Lisa's ability will only activate at the end step, so casting Martial Coup can make you miss out on a lot of tokens if you don't have the mana to bring her back right away, which with an X spell, you most likely won't. I've included a Planeswalker in this category, which is Elspeth, Sun's Champion. Her plus one ability is worth the six mana cost that she has alone, giving you three tokens every single turn. If she did nothing else, she would be in just for that, but she can also act as a board wipe that doesn't hit the majority of our creatures, and if you get to her ultimate ability, can give you a game-ending emblem. Our other two non-creature permanents are Luminarch Ascension and Mimic Vat. Luminarch Ascension will ideally go on the battlefield early before your opponents have the chance to get things swinging at you. Usually within two turn cycles, you'll be able to create 4-4 four, four angels for two mana on the regular. Mimic Vat pays attention to dying creatures and then creates copies of them when you activate this. This is primarily meant to get you something back that was really valuable on your board that recently died, but it can also be used to mimic one of your opponent's creatures that has to die, and you can take advantage of your opponent's boards that way. The rest of the token generators are creatures, and I have to start with my absolute favorite, which is Pitiless Plunderer, which says whenever another creature you control dies, create a treasure token. Note that he says that whenever any creature you control dies, not just non-token creatures. This means that sacrificing your spirits that you make with Thalise will make you tokens, which in turn will trigger Thalise and make you more spirit tokens at the next end step. The fact that you can do this on each of your opponent's turns as well and get the benefit out of it is insanely good and going to propel you very far into the advantage. Other token generators that behave similarly to the Plunderer are Pawn of Ulamog, Requiem Angel, and Twilight Drover, but they all have their downsides in comparison. Pawn of Ulamog creates tokens only when non-token creatures die, Requiem Angel only triggers when non-spirit creatures die, and Twilight Drover only triggers when tokens die, as well as having a mana cost that you have to activate to make more tokens. Even with all of these downsides, they're valuable to have on the battlefield so that you can get the benefit from sacrifice any of your creatures, not just the spirits. Endrixar Master Breeder and Monastery Mentor trigger off of spells being cast. This deck has a lower than average density of creatures when compared to the average deck, so triggering the Mentor is not very difficult and will give us a couple of extra tokens. Endrixar works best if you can get the benefit from sacrificing the Thrills almost immediately, because if you cast too many creature spells, he'll sacrifice himself, so make sure that you have some way to get rid of the Thrills so that you can keep him around. To finish off our token generators, we have Lena Selfless Champion, Thraben Doomsayer, and Grave Titan. Lena makes tokens when she enters the battlefield, so she's more akin to one of the one-off token generators than the others. However, her sacrifice ability lets us protect all of our creatures from a board wipe, and that can be valuable if we're not ready to get rid of all of our tokens yet. Thraben Doomsayer's main attraction is that he can tap to make a token, which means we can get at least one extra token every turn with him out after the first turn rotation. Grave Titan not only makes two tokens when he enters the battlefield, but also when he attacks, meaning that if he has a target to swing at, we're making two tokens every turn at the very least. Finally, we have our payoffs, which are triggered effects that happen when we either create tokens or sacrifice tokens. Starting with the sacrifice side, we have Blood Artist and Bastion of Remembrance, both of which will drain our opponents whenever one of our creatures dies. Blood Artist also triggers off of our opponent's creatures dying, and Bastion makes a token when it enters, so they're both very good. There are other options out there that I didn't include, so feel free to add more if you like that kind of payoff. Instead, I've included Proper Burial, which will give us life every time a creature recontrol dies. While the spirits aren't very tough, their life gain will add up and can enable some other things like Yawgmoth. For our token payoffs, we have Corpse Knight, Divine Visitation, and Anointed Procession. Corpse Knight, I've found, is a reverse blood artist as it drains whenever we create tokens rather than getting rid of them. Thalise wants to make a lot of tokens, so that merits having a Corpse Knight in this deck. 
Divine Visitation will make any creature token that we create a 4-4 angel with flying and vigilance instead, which is not only a powerful effect, but a combo enabler that we can talk about later. Anointed Procession goes so well with Thelise and so many other token generators in the deck that we have to include it. With Procession and Thelise out, we're making four times as many spirits as what the original amount of tokens would have been. Think about it, tapping Thraben Doomsayer will give you six tokens in total. This is another combo enabler and we'll have to touch on it more in our win con section. But before we get to that, we need to talk about some utility cards. As always, it's important to have ramp, card advantage, interaction, and protection that synergizes with your deck. The main mana rocks that we've included in the deck are, as always, Soul Ring and Arcane Signet, along with Orzhov Signet, Talisman of Hierarchy, and Thought Vessel. Then we have Smothering Tithe because we're playing white and it's basically an essential ramp piece at this point, but it also makes tokens that synergizes with the lease. Next we have Black Market, which adds a counter whenever any creature dies and will give us mana equal to the number of counters on it on every one of our turns. Bringing this out and then sacrificing a bunch of our spirits will set us up nicely for the next turn. We also have some creatures with Core Cartographer and Solemn Simulacrum, both of which will tutor us a land when they enter the battlefield. Cartographer will give us a godless shrine if we don't have it already, and Solemn Simulacrum will also give us a card when it dies, which means that sacrificing it doesn't feel so bad. Next is our card advantage, which I can clearly break into two categories. The first is tutors, because this is a combo deck, and we'll be wanting to have a couple of these to get our win cons out faster. The cards that I've chosen are Grim Tutor, Wishclaw Talisman, and Sidisi Undead Vizier, because they all feel pretty synergistic with this deck. I acknowledge that there are better tutors out there, but I feel like these are pretty good mid-range, mid-price tutors if you can't afford the top tier ones. The second category is, well, everything else, and that includes Smothering Abomination and Erebos Bleakhearted. These are both sacrifice payoffs that will give us additional cards if we're willing to pay for them. The Abomination gives us cards whenever we sacrifice creatures, but requires us to sacrifice a creature every turn, which can be bad without a token generator. Erebos will give us a card if we pay two life whenever we sacrifice a creature, which is another case like Yawgmoth, where if we have something that gives us life gain, that can draw us an insane amount of cards. Life is a resource like everything else, and Black uses it best to get some serious advantage. Dark Prophecy is also a sacrifice payoff, but it's unconditional as opposed to Erebos, giving us a card and making us lose a life every time a creature we control dies. Mentor of the Meek will give us card draw for incoming tokens if we can pay for it, and Skull Clamp provides a way to get rid of our tokens while rewarding us with two cards each time. Interaction in Orzhov Colors is pretty powerful, and with white having the ability to deal with basically anything, that's why I've included Swords to Plowshares and Path to Exile, our one mana instance that will take care of any creature on the board. Mortify is more expensive, but will also take care of enchantments and has very little downside. Utter End can take care of any non-land permanent permanently. Then we have two more board wipes with Merciless Eviction and Living Death. Merciless Eviction is super flexible at combating whatever board state we're up against, even if it exiles our creatures rather than destroying them, if it comes to that. Living Death, on the other hand, makes us sacrifice all of our creatures and bring everything back from the graveyard. If we have any sack payoffs, this is their time to shine, but additionally we can get a lot of stuff that might have been wiped earlier back very quickly. The last topic before we get to our win cons is our protection and recursion section, and we'll start with Grave Pact and Dictate of Erebos. These have identical effects, which say that whenever one of our creatures dies, everyone else has to sacrifice a creature. And this is pretty brutal, especially when facing a board wipe or when you have one of those sack outlets and a way to get a lot of tokens, this can really easily control the board. Eldrazi Monument will make you sacrifice a creature on your upkeep, but in return will give them a buff, flying, and indestructible, protecting them from further board wipes. Spirit Bonds can make you tokens if you pay the cost whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield, but it will also allow you to pay and sacrifice a spirit and protect one of your other creatures. And since we're going to have a lot of spirits, whether Spirit Bonds makes them or not, this can be useful for protecting our commander from interaction as well. And finally, for our protection, we have Lightning Greaves, making one of our key pieces hard to target. 
For Recursion, I have Dutiful Attendant, Nightmare Shepherd, and Nim Death Mantle. Dutiful Attendant will give us one creature back when it dies. While it's not a great rate, it works well with our Aristocrat strategy. Nightmare Shepherd is incredible in this deck for it not only saves one of our creatures if it dies, but it can also make a token. This means that Thalese will see it and make a spirit. Nim Death Mantle will let us return a creature that has just died back to the battlefield for 4 mana, and it's yet another combo enabler that we'll talk about in the next section. Finally, the section that you've been waiting for. How is this deck going to win? First, for kicks, I've included Torment of Hailfire. I feel like any deck that you have that you're going to need some sort of mana sync and you're playing black should include Torment of Hailfire. It's one of the best mana sync win cons and it's one of my favorites. If you have another one that you like more, feel free to use that, but it's the one that I've included in my build. Primarily, this deck is aiming to win off of one of its many combos. There are two explicit combos using cards that I've already talked about and I'll go over them briefly. The first combo is Grave Titan plus Nim Death Mantle plus Ashnod's Altar. Essentially, you can create an infinite loop of sacrificing the Grave Titan and its two zombies to Ashnod's Altar, then using the mana to pay for Nim Death Mantle returning the Grave Titan to the battlefield. If you sacrifice all three every time Grave Titan returns, you end up with infinite colorless mana. And if you sacrifice the Grave Titan and one of the zombies instead of all three, you end up with infinite tokens. Either way, you'll have infinite tokens entering the battlefield. So even if your infinite mana doesn't pay off, you'll make infinite spirits at the end of your turn and you're bound to be able to do something with all of those tokens. The other combo is Requiem Angel, Divine Visitation, and any sock outlet. We'll use Ashnod's Altar as an example here. Quite simply, Requiem Angel makes spirits whenever non-spirits die, so if you make them into angels instead, you can forever sacrifice the angels and get more spirits. On its own, it doesn't do anything, but you can get infinite token creation, and if you have Anointed Procession, you can get infinite tokens with just those three. Or if you have a Blood Artist, you can get infinite death triggers and drain out your opponents. In either of these combos, you'll need some sort of an outlet or a payoff to seal the deal. Additionally, we have some amazing value pieces and a lot of cards that interact in unexpected ways with each other while they're on the battlefield. Oftentimes, just a combination of using these cards to make tokens is enough to win the game because you'll build up such a board state that it's so massive and it's so hard to deal with. If I had to pick one card to tutor for, if you had none of the other pieces of your combo in your hand, it would be Pitiless Plunderer because he enables the deck giving you so much mana off of creatures and so many tokens from everything that you're creating and sacrificing. Real quick, I'll go over the mana base in this deck. There's a pretty good balance of white to black pips, so I've included a lot of dual lands to help fix our mana. Notably, I've included Castle Ardenvale and Memorial to Glory as token generators and Bajuka Bog as a graveyard hate piece. Then I've included Bright Climb Pathway, Godless Shrine, Temple of Silence, Caves of Koilos, Isolated Chapel, Concealed Courtyard, Silent Clearing, Fetid Heath, Scoured Barrens, and Tainted Fields. On top of all of that, I have 12 Swamps and 12 Plains. It's a pretty balanced deck in terms of white to black ratio, so I'm not terribly concerned about fixing our mana here, so you could go with an even more budget mana base and be pretty well off. And that's it for our video. Thank you so much for watching my deck tech on Thalese. I hope you enjoyed it and you have new inspiration to build a new Orzhov Aristocrats deck. If you like this video and want to support us directly, head on over to patreon.com slash command valley to sign up today. We have exclusive content, discord, merch, you can play games with other members of the podcast, and it's a great community to be a part of. Thank you again to GameGrid for sponsoring this video. If you go through the affiliate link in the description, anything you purchase there will help the channel. They ship nationwide, so go get your card singles there and they'll ship it right to you. We have live streams every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Join us for some Brawl on Arena. Check us out on social media. We have our links to those in the description below and have a fantastic week.